I must admit, there's something satisfying about a collection. Having a set that's defined by a shared characteristic. Collecting is what made Pokemon's Gotta Catch Em All slogan in the West so enticing. Despite the fact that Pokemon themselves never really wanting to push this goal. Because, well, 151 Pokemon is a lot. And with hundreds of new additions and multiple limited events, it's pretty clear that catching all of them was never the intention. To the point where the recent games outright make it impossible to do so. However, Pokemon definitely knows the power of a set where some of the more recent games have started to implement a special group of new designs who don't only share a theme and are treated differently in the lore, but they also have stats that rival legendaries. You can call me Nordis, and I've been working on my own creature collector based off of STEM topics for the past few years, and lately, I've been showing off my own special set of Zodiac Beasts. So stick around as I'll close out the video by showing off my own design. But today, We'll go over the special categories of Pokemon and try to think what else might be in store for the future. I've had past videos going over these categories, so here's a quick rundown. In the seventh generation, there were Ultra Beasts, extra dimensional aliens who are dropped into the Hawaii inspired Alola region. Their story was inspired by real life invasive species, which are species that enter a new habitat but then start to dominate the other native species. Since these guys were supposed to be foreign to the series, their designs purposely didn't look like what most people would call a Pokemon. Then the next time we saw a special category like this was in the 9th generation, where Paradox Pokemon are Pokemon from different timelines that are leaking in the España-inspired Paldea region through the power of magical terror crystals. Even though it's not explicitly stated, there seems to be a similar parallel to invasive species again, where these guys need to be quarantined in the crater or else they'll demolish native wildlife. But this time around, these sets came in two separate themes depending on the version of the game you got, with Scarlet providing past dino-shaped paradoxes and Violet having future robots. Unlike the Ultra Beasts, these designs were clear references to pre-existing Pokemon. Now, I have a lot to say about my own opinions on Paradox Pokemon now that the Scarlet Violet story is complete, but I could save that for a different video. Alright, so these two generations already showed a major difference in their philosophies, where the Paradox Pokemon are grouped by visual features, but the Ultra Beast Pokemon just all abide by the rule of looking unconventional. So just by looking at the designs, what will be the next step? Well, the last time I asked this, I talked about fusions. And I have a few more to show this time around. Pokemon fans have showed a lot of love for fusions and hybrid species where two pre-existing designs are meshed into a new one. But every time it's brought up, some nerd would point out the logistics of how impossibly large the combinations would be. Let's see, uh, 125 choose 2, cross that out, and yeah, then... That's a pretty big number. And that's not even counting the forms. But this special category archetype offers a solution to this conundrum. Because what if Pokemon introduced just a dozen of fusions as separate Pokemon? In a way, Pokemon already showed what this would be like with the Iron Valiant Paradox fusing Gardevoir and Gallade. Now, the last time I did this, I thought that the shared typing would actually just be an ability that gave a stronger offensive boost to the Pokemon. But gets weird for fusions and monotypes because it just becomes the worst adaptability. So what if it also boosted their allies whenever they use that specific type? Like what Steely Spirit does. Maybe that could be a bit more exciting. Also, I want to note that most of the fusions I made here are also referencing some real life hybrids. What could I say? I couldn't help myself. Alright, so fusions could be a neat way to reference some older designs. But why does Pokemon reference old designs anyway? This whole exercise was to make ideas for a special category, not just new types of variants. Well, having completely new designs unfortunately has more risk than referencing an older design that an older fan might recognize. In the case of Ultra Beast, where the designs were supposed to look abnormal for a Pokemon, many people to this day look at them and come to that conclusion, but with a negative connotation. Like, oh, they must be running out of ideas because look at how weird these are. 
However, ironically, this kind of behavior made Pokemon reference their older designs multiple times, which might make other fans say they're running out of ideas again. But wait, wait, what was that? Was that another special set of designs? In Generation 6 and 8, there were new designs that were tied to their respective battle gimmicks. Even when these gimmicks applied to every Pokemon, only a select few species had access to these special gimmick forms. Now, it's important to note that the battle gimmicks have continued to exist since the 6th generation, but it's just that Gen 7's Z moves and Gen 9's terrestrialization didn't really change the actual design of the Pokemon. Well, except for two species that have special terrestrialization forms, but that pales in comparison to the dozens of Mega and Gigantamax designs. There's a pretty clear distinction between a gimmick form and these special groups of new species where the former is a main new feature of the gameplay that's heavily advertised to show how the game is different while the latter is only hinted at before the game's release to later surprise the player in the late game areas. It's pretty interesting to see how gimmick forms and these special Pokemon have alternated in these past four generations. Does this mean Gen 10 will have special gimmick forms? Uh, maybe. Maybe not. Only time could tell. But let's get back to this archetype of special categories of new designs. What goes into making a special group within a roster that's already filled with colorful creatures? We brushed past this earlier, but both examples so far have had major roles in the main story of their respective games. Major roles that are also tied to the game's box legendaries. Like Sun and Moon are celestial bodies, and we got aliens. While Scarlet and Violet have this past and future theme going on with their box legendaries, and they're directly tied to the other Paradox Pokemon. This makes further sense because these guys go toe to toe with other legendaries and would appear later in the game as a tougher challenge to the player. So I think it could help to think about themes that could be further explored. Say that the theme's about myths and oral traditions. Maybe there's a group of cryptids and fairy tale creatures that patrol the area. Or maybe you have a region about justice and morals, with a select team of individuals who are souped up to become superheroes and villains, like Despicable Me 4 coming to theaters this July 3rd. I don't know why I said that. I mean, the movie's already out. But I'm spitballing here. What if you're on an island and there are species that went under island gigantism as they evolved to become giant forms of previous designs as opposed to just a temporary transformation? What if you had a world of different timelines? So you had to further lean into the weirdness by having a completely different art style in their renders. Hmm, you recognize what's happening here? These past few ideas are other games from the creature collecting genre. Look. If you're just here to hear about what Game Freak might put in their next games, uh, for Legend ZA, I don't think they'll even have a set like this. Probably just new Megas, Convergence, Regional Forms, Evolutions. But in a future generation, honestly, my best guess right now is something like a dozen fusions. However, we've seen how these sets have been tied to the box legendaries and themes of the games, so a more accurate prediction could be made whenever those get announced. But with that same line of reasoning, if you are making your own set of creatures and want to include a special category, consider what their theme would be and how it relates to the story you're trying to tell. Also take a look around in other games that interest you. I personally love to look at indie games because I think they bring some fresh new innovations to the genre more often than what larger established franchises do. I hope this emphasis on theming could help you if you wanted to make your own special group of designs yourself. So. What did I do? I've been working on Stemma for a few years now. A creature collector where all the creatures are based off of STEM topics, from acceleration to waveforms. And since over a year ago, I've been trying to develop my own game with these guys. But before all that, I used to have a roster of a dozen designs loosely based off of the Zodiac symbols. A seemingly different theme compared to the rest of my project. However, even back then, I wanted to have a story about the difference between astrology and astronomy as the former applies meanings behind the patterns and the latter recognizes that the patterns are a way to communicate our own perspectives. Is there really an interconnected reasoning behind these zodiac creatures? 
or should we be more interested in what they can do, as each of these creatures still represent a STEM topic of their own. As I'm still coding the basic essentials of my game, I am trying to reduce my scope by not including this chapter in my base game, and since it will be a long time until I implement these guys, if I ever do, I'm comfortable to talk about these old drawings that I had from a few years ago, like today's video where we're talking about Leo. Hmm. According to the horoscope, if you are a Leo, you will have a nice day today. So these zodiac creatures specifically cover some rarer topics in science, such as genetic chimerism, where an individual is made up of more than one set of DNA. A zygote with a single complete set of DNA can make an individual on its own, making that set of DNA their genome. But when the stem cells that'll turn into that individual get mixed with the other stem cells with a different genome, or if there's a mutation in some of the stem cells at such an early stage, an individual can grow up to have multiple genomes in their body, making a genetic chimera. Sometimes the different genotypes express different appearances, also known as phenotypes, where we could actually see the different genotypes be expressed on the same body. But in other times, there could be no physical difference at all. Now, chimerism in humans like this is pretty rare because if cells with other genomes are introduced later in development, the body's immune system would try to attack the foreign cells and filter it out. So this is why the immune system gets naturally suppressed during pregnancies and it has to be artificially suppressed for organ transplants. In fact, successful organ transplants are technically genetic chimeras, and there are plenty of healthy individuals with multiple harmonious genomes to create the individual that they are. Like Chime Leo. It seems that genetic chimerism could be more common in plants, and I saw some examples of chimera cats. Also, if I ever include the zodiac creatures in Stemma, they'll have their own attributes, but for now, here's just Pokemon's Beast Boost ability. As always, I'll leave some links in the description that go more in depth about this genetic phenomena, so please check them out to learn some more. Special categories are a fun archetype, a tough group to face in the late game to show how much you've actually grown. If you need inspiration behind making such a group, it seems that their themes tie pretty well with the overall story as they would often be there during the concluding acts. I don't know, it's probably a too analytical approach cause at the end of the day, they're just a fun group you could reasonably collect. So remember to have fun with the concept, and I hope you had fun with some of the topics we discussed today. If you're interested in the progress of my own STEMA project, follow the channel got a whole playlist here going over my different stemmas. I want to give a special shout out to my Patreon supporters for directly supporting me, but you could just support me for free by just liking and sharing this video. Thank you for watching till the end, and Leo or not, I hope you can recognize how much it takes to make you who you are today.